Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy JP uh, with TwoCoastCustoms.com and uh, again, it's always been a while since I did last video but anyway, um, lately uh, I've been working on uh, just really really getting into foam building and trying to figure out different tips and tricks um, things to make it easier and also um, to add a lot more uh, detail to the sculpts and um, different objects that we make. So uh, I stumbled upon a technique and I, I really wanted to make a video on it because it's pretty cool and uh, you can get some good detailed effects with it. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, how I can get these these fine details in here without uh, like really getting nasty foam marks and stuff like that and uh, I've got some scrap foam here and uh, I'll be able to show you guys the process so I'm going to zoom in and then uh, we'll do a little tutorial thanks for watching guys alright <laughs> alright first thing you want to do is get a scrap piece of foam because uh, you're going to want to practice this uh, a few times it's really not that difficult but um, uh, foam isn't cheap and uh, you don't want to you don't want to waste it if you don't have to so uh, I'm just using a, a bigger piece here we are going to kind of waste it but um, uh, it'll be easier to show in the video alright now uh, the details on the shoulder there um, I found these brass stencils were nice to use on the uh, shoulder bell there. Uh, you don't need brass stencils. You don't need stencils at all really, but I wanted a, uh, a uniform look to it because this is going to be molded um, and cast in uh, hard material. Um, but uh, you can use different types of stencils. Um, I like these filigrees. I found these at uh, Hobby Lobby. And they're just a few bucks a piece, so worth having. Uh, gives me ideas of how I might like to make a pattern and such. But uh, just to give you an example, we will uh, we'll use this uh, pattern here. Okay. Um, now, the way I like to do this is trace it on the foam first. Um, so let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, it's pretty... Uh, pretty straightforward. I uh, use a pencil uh, just lightly run around it. Don't push it real hard. Uh, you can if you want but it's not a big deal. So now keep in mind are you tracing your your pattern, your stencil is going to be smaller when you pull this off because you're tracing on the inside of the stencil. That's fine. Um, the more you press your blade into the foam, whenever you use the heat gun, which I'm going to explain, that the further it's going to expand out from where you cut. So, if you want it more defined, don't go as deep. If you want a bigger, wider edge, then go a little deeper. I don't know if you can you can see that, but it's just kind of roughly traced in there. All right. Now, what you want to do? You need a really sharp blade to do this. I'm just using my X-Acto knife and uh, a uh, sharpener here, and I'll go ahead and zoom in. Kind of see a little better. All right, uh, I suggest sharpness very often as you go. Mine has a coarse and a fine. I use the coarse and then the, the fine mostly. So you're using mostly this tip, so you need it really sharp. So anyway, we're just going to do the triangles. Now keep in mind, whenever you cut into this thing, get your lines right, because when you hit it with the heat gun, it's going to expand however you cut the lines. So that's why I say use a, a practice piece and then uh, 
and I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you over here. Like, let's say I want to intersect this line here. I would rather start at this line and come out. That way my corner is, is 90 degrees as opposed to come to this line like this. Because if I come over and pass it, I'll show you what it's going to do with the heat gun. It's not going to look as good. All right, so... trace our pattern here and I feel my blade kind of dragging just a little bit so I'll just make that point sharp again and I'll go ahead and do this make this easier to work for me blade sharp is the uh, key thing especially when you go on to, uh, to these really round shapes you really want your your blade to slide through the foam you really don't want to have to saw it but when you get into these tight corners I just go up and down and make sure I stay on that pattern and uh, it usually comes out all right Now I'm not going to trace all these because um, you'll get the point. But uh, what we'll do is we'll make our own kind of design here. Let's say we just wanted to sketch something. Um, I'll just do a, like a V. Okay. Another little trick here too. Is, uh, if you cut at a deep angle it'll give you another look as well so I'll show you I'm gonna cut this at a 45 degree angle and go kind of deep on uh, both sides here and keep your blade sharp Like I said, play with this because the different amount of heat you use will make it look different and you'll see. So, now we got some of our shapes traced. I'm not going to trace all these because you'll get the point. But anyway, take your heat gun and uh, don't put it on high. You don't want to burn this stuff up because multiple passes will make this look a little differently. So, what we'll do is we'll put it on low. All right, and see our pattern here. Now we're just gonna kind of go back and forth over it. A few times, you see it's getting a little more defined. That's because those voids are expanding. Okay. The more heat you put to it, the more they'll expand. I'm using low so I don't burn the uh, the foam right off. But the more heat you put, the, the more defined it'll get. Now, our 45 degree cuts here, watch this. This doesn't look too good, but that's where our blade kind of skipped up, so we could just slice that. Put the heat back to it. And it'll keep expanding. Now with those wide cuts, the more heat you put on it, 
the outsides really get a lot wider and stretch further from what you actually cut. So that'll give you a different look. Now as far as the intersecting lines, I'll show you what happens. Wherever you cut is going to expand. So you see if you overcut like that, it's going to give you that, that ugly mark where you passed it up. So. Anyway, I thought this was a technique is really cool and it's helping me on my material armor I'm building. So you see we put a little more heat and it's, and it's stretching a little more and a little more. Um, now when you get it how you want, you know, obviously stop the heat, don't keep heating it up. But um Yeah. Pretty cool. Obviously, if uh, you want to see how it kind of looks, you put your little paint on it, dry brush a little gold, just kind of show you. So maybe that could give you a little better view of how it looks. Uh, here's the, uh, another piece I'd done the other day. Okay, there we go. Gonna show the details. Camera almost makes it kind of look grainy. But anyway, those are kind of rushed. But take your time and uh, basically take your time and just keep the blade sharp. You can get them looking pretty crispy. So, and this is a. Uh, it's a, a little leaf pattern I did with that brass stencil, and that's literally just tracing it. Oh, it's not picking up too good. That's literally just kind of tracing it, and then uh, hitting it with the heat gun. It works pretty good. It's a little black spot because it got a little too hot right there, but it didn't change the texture. It just changed the color, so we're good. So.